welcome to the instructions on how to use the Magnus Mark II. As a first step, make sure you adjust the nylon line to your specific hand length, as explained in the instruction sheet. Here we have laid out the main body, the thread cartridge, the watch cartridge, and the magnetic projectile. The first thing we're going to do is show you how to load the thread cartridge and the projectile. To load the thread cartridge and projectile, the first thing you're going to do is take the thread cartridge and pull out the end of the thread. You'll notice the end of the thread has a loop, which we're going to use to hook onto the projectile. First, what you're going to want to do is pull it straight, as straight as possible. And you're going to thread this through that hole in the middle of the Magnus. You want to keep it as straight as possible so that it's easy for the thread to go through all the way. Once it goes through, you can see it come out the other end and you can pull it, pull it straight out. So now you have this loop. You want to open this loop. so that we can now hook it onto the end of the projectile. You'll see the end of the projectile has this opening that's perfect for the thread. So just pull it down, pull it in, and now that's in there. Now that the thread cartridge and projectile are connected, we're gonna show you how to load and reload the Magnus. So the first thing we're gonna do is spool out all of the thread. This is to simulate having shot out the Magnus. Every time you shoot out the Magnus, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you spool out all of the thread. So make sure it pulls out all the way until it doesn't go out anymore. Always make sure that it shoots in a straight line and that when reloading, the line does not touch itself or loop upon itself. When it does this, it can cause jams and tangles. So make sure to avoid this. After spooling out all of the thread, you want to change the direction of the motor reloading. That's with the bottom switch. So just put it in the position that it wasn't in before. All this does is it changes the direction of rotation of the motor which in turn makes sure the line doesn't twist as you keep on shooting. If you don't do the step of changing the direction of the motor, the line will eventually twist, tangle, and knot upon itself. The next step before you turn on the motor is to make sure you have your thread cartridge at a 90 degree angle to the main body, like this. This is to make sure that the line spools on correctly onto the spool. If it's not 90 degrees like this or this, the line can spool off of the reel and cause jams and tangles. So always make sure that the line is 90 degrees and spooling onto the spool here. Now the last step before you turn on the motor, take your other hand and make sure you're applying some tension to the line. This is to make sure the line does not load onto the spool loose, which can cause issues when it's shooting out. So now you're ready, You've done all the steps, you're ready to turn on the motor. So take this top switch and just flick it to the on position. As the thread loads onto the spool, you wanna make sure that it's being distributed evenly. You don't want too much thread in any one particular spot on the spool. So far we have five rules for reloading. The first is to make sure you spool out all of the thread. The second is to make sure you change the direction of the motor. The third is to make sure you're at a 90 degree angle when reloading. The fourth is to make sure you apply tension to the line when it's coming back in. And the fifth is to make sure that the line loads onto the spool evenly. The sixth rule is to make sure when all the thread is loaded back onto the spool to turn off the motor immediately. This ensures that the motor doesn't burn out and overheat. We're now ready to load the thread cartridge back in. So from this position, you can see there's tension on the line. You just simply slot the thread cartridge in and push it in. Now to load the projectile in, you'll notice there are two sides to the projectile. There's a side which a magnet is exposed and a side where it is not. You want the magnet exposed side to be facing directly down to reload correctly into the magnus. So you can see here, this is the correct orientation. The magnet side is facing down, no magnet is facing up, and you can just push it straight in and it will lock in place. You're now ready to fire the magnus. Point the magnus where you want the thread to go, and then you can pull on the nylon line to trigger it. Once you fire it out, you can follow the same reloading sequence over and over again to keep using the Magnus. It's very important to follow all of the reloading rules every time you use it. This is to make sure that the Magnus does not jam or tangle. In case you forget one of the reloading rules and accidentally jam or tangle the thread in a way that you can't clear manually, we supply an extra roll of thread for this purpose. We'll show you now how to change out the thread. 
the first thing you're going to do is want to disengage the Magnus and take out the thread from the projectile. Once that's done, the next step is to open up the reload cartridge. What you want to do now is spool out all of the thread and then using scissors, cut off the remaining thread on the spool. Now here you can see the completely blank spool and once the old thread is off, you can install the new thread. For the new thread, you'll notice that one end of the thread has the loop for the projectile. The other end is blank. You have to insert the blank end of thread into the spool. Here you can see we have the blank end. We're going to insert this into the spool. You'll see that there's a very small opening for the thread. You're going to put this thread through that opening and then tie four knots. All right. That's knot number one. That's knot number two. That's knot number three. And finally, knot number four. With all these knots, you want to make sure the knots are as tight to the spool as possible. If not, this may interfere with the thread while it's spooling out. Making sure I'm pulling it as tight as possible so it sits on the spool tightly and giving it a couple test tugs just to make sure everything is snug. Once you're sure that it's snug, you can go ahead and cut off the excess thread. To note, when you're cutting off this thread, this is a very strong spider wire fishing line. So you're going to have to put tension on the thread before cutting it. So you can see I've looped the excess thread around the end of the cartridge and I'm pulling on it, which is applying tension. And now I can go ahead and cut off the thread. Once that's done, you can reinstall the electronic components inside the cartridge and then close it up. If you end up replacing the entire motor and switch assembly, make sure that you reapply the black tape to the motor to make sure that it stays in place and doesn't rotate when the spool is rotating. Once that's done, you fully replace your thread and your cartridge is good to go again. To recharge the battery, unscrew the thread cartridge and carefully pull out the battery. From here, you can take the included battery charger and line up the two ports, black on black. Once that's done, you can plug this into any USB input and you'll see a red light turn on. This red light means that the battery is charging. When the battery is done charging, that red light will turn off. Once it's done charging, you can reinstall the battery inside the cartridge. Once again, line it up black on black and carefully push the ports together. Reposition the battery inside the cartridge. And once that's done, you can get the top cover and screw it back on. Now you're ready to go. The Magnus can be worn with any 18 millimeter NATO style watch strap. To replace the strap, all you have to do is pull out the existing strap and you can see a rectangular hole. All you have to do is slot the new strap inside that hole. And just like that, you're ready to go. Finally, let's explain how the watch cartridge works. The watch cartridge tells the time in hours to the right, minutes and tens in the middle, and minutes and ones on the left. The watch cartridge should already be adjusted to your specific time zone, so there should be no need to adjust. If you do need to adjust the time, you can reference the included watch cartridge pamphlet. Thanks so much for tuning in and hope to see you again soon.